you know what's great? Pikmin. There's Min, and you pick them. What more could you possibly want out of a game series? In all seriousness, Pikmin is beloved for like 76.2 reasons. The cute characters, the gorgeous worlds, the insane skill ceiling, the depth given to the world and characters, and it's that last one I want to focus on today. As you may know, Pikmin 4 is finally a real thing, and its existence has given me reason to go back and play the rest of the series again for like the 8th time now. And in the process, I found myself attached to one very detailed part of the game, the taxonomy. A lot of it is thanks to this awesome video by YouTuber Griffco that everyone should watch six times. Basically, Pikmin 2 introduced the Piclopedia, an encyclopedic index of every enemy, boss, and a handful of plants that inhabit PNF 404. While this feature did not return in Pikmin 3 originally, it did get a spiritual successor in Hey Pikmin's Creature Logs, before returning properly in Pikmin 3 Deluxe. With Olimar's notes detailing the creature's bizarre biology and Louis' hilarious recipes, they did a lot to expand the Pikmin planet and make it feel more like a living, thriving ecosystem. This newfound obsession of mine eventually led to me creating cladograms, basically a family tree-like system showing how the creatures are related to each other, and by extension, a hypothetical evolutionary tree showing how they evolved. And now I am here to talk about all of Zit. Before we begin though, let's establish a few things of note. Firstly, this discussion is going to be using info from the Piclopedias of Pikmin 2 and 3 Deluxe, as well as the creature logs of Hey Pikmin. I own the Switch version of Pikmin 2, so aside from one specific alteration, I won't be talking about it here. And while Pikmin 4's demo is out, and it does have the Piclopedia, I'm opting to hold off on talking about it until the full release. Secondly, this will only talk about the animals of the Pikmin series. No plant, fungi, or... Eh... Other? Again, I'll be updating this after Pikmin 4's release, so we'll talk about those and any other creatures not seen in this video there. Even with those restrictions though, that leaves like 100 different creatures to classify, so let's get right into it. Let's start with some of the cold hard facts. In Pikmin, each creature is given a family, genus, and species name, which is already enough intel to begin piecing together some small cladograms showing the different families. Let's start with easily the biggest family, the Grub Dogs. Here is the cladogram I put together to show off the Grub Dogs relationship. For those of you who have never seen cladograms before, don't worry, I'll explain what we're looking at. The very first thing we must do is split up the two defined genera, or the plural of genus. For the grub dogs, we split the Oculus genus, consisting primarily of land-dwelling dogs, and Ichthyosa, for their aquatic cousins, the water dumples. Over in the Ichthyosa branch, we further separate the standard dumples from the long water dumple, a boss in Hay Pikmin that's identified as a unique species. Back with the Oculus genus, we now need to start creating intermediate branches, basically taking the most different creatures and splitting them up from the rest. To that end, we'll first separate the Eye Stalker Bulbeel from the rest, as it's the only aquatic member of the genus. Next, we split apart the Bulbears and Blaxes into their own branch, as they are far more aggressive than the other varieties. Within this branch, we separate the Bulbears, then the two types of Bulblack species. While Empress Bullblax does share a name with the Emperor, her appearance and behavior is more different from the other Bull. While Empress Bullblax does share the Bullblax surname, her appearance and behavior is more different from her fellow Bullblaxes, as well as standard Bullborbs. So I opted to give her and her larvae her own branch. Finally, there are the four standard Bulborbs, with the Whip Tongue Bulborb getting its own branch, then the Hairy Bulborb due to its appearance only in caves, and finally the Red and Orange Bulborbs getting the final split. The last three are all subspecies of the same species, Kageyami. With the biggest one done, let's talk about a family closely connected to the Grub Dogs, the Bread Bugs. All breadbugs are part of the Pansaurus genus, so our first split will be between the Foragers and the Bulborb Mimics. For the Foragers, we also split the Crumbug from the others, since it's the only one who can directly kill Pikmin, then of course separate the Breadbug and Giant Breadbug. With the Mimics, we first split the Pseudoculeus species from the Volcanus species. 
Volcanus is further split by the Fire Flat Bulborb and Dwarf Fiery Bulblax, and with the other three, we separate the Dwarf Snowy Bulborb from the others, as it's the only one found exclusively underground. Next up are the Mandiblards, which also consist of eight members. All are part of the Himiagia genus, so first we'll split the Sheer Grubs and Wigs from the other, more specialized grubs. Within these specialized grubs, we then split the Spore Grub from the others, since it attacks with toxic gas, not spikes. And then we split the Spear Grub and Sheer Blug. With the more standard grubs, we split the Male, Female, and Swarming Sheer Grubs into one branch, and both the regular and Queen Sheer Wigs into another. Pretty self-explanatory, I think, but hopefully for newbies to taxonomy, you can get the general gist of exactly how these cladograms are supposed to function. I suppose now's as good a time as any to add the uh, disclaimer, I'm not really that big into biology, I'm kinda winging a lot of this, so if I'm making any very glaring omissions or errors, then please, yell at me down in the comments below. We're gonna continue through the families though, going in order from biggest to smallest, with the next biggest one being the Dweevils at 6 members. All species belong to the Mandarachnia genus, with our main split separating species that attack by picking up objects, and the ones with more specialized defenses. With the weapon users, we split the Volatile Dweevil from the Titan Dweevil, but the others gave me some trouble trying to divide them up. In the end, I separated the Caustic Dweevil, as it attacks with bodily fluids rather than some specialized organs, then the Anode Dweevil, as it evolved a special organ to create electric charges. Finally, the Fiery and Munge Dweevils are at the end, with both attacking with either flammable or toxic gases. Now for a few well-known families with only five members, starting with the Blowhogs. All species are of the Sus genus, with the first split being between the Grounded Hogs and Floating Hogs. The floaters were easy to divide, splitting the Puffy and Withering Blowhogs. For the others, I took some more creative liberties. The Watery Blowhog is labeled as a unique species. However, Olimar's notes call it a variant subspecies of the Fiery Hogs. Similarly, the Fiery Blowlet from Hay Pikmin is classified as a subspecies of the normal Blowhog. I opted to separate the Blowlet and Watery as subspecies of the Fiery Blowhogs, following Olimar's notes and taking into account that there are real-world pigs that are relatively identical, just smaller rather than taking the boring route of having the Blowlet just be a juvenile fiery blowhog. Next up are the Amphitubers, all members of the Amphicarus genus. First, we split the Wallywog from the others, as it's found exclusively in subterranean areas, and then we split the Yellowwog and its various life stages from the fiery counterpart, which is a variant of the normal young Yellowwog. Next up is one of my favorite families, and the first one I ever categorized, the Arachnorbs. All members are of the Pseudo-Arachnia genus, with our first split separating the manet legs from the others. Obviously, it's the most unlike any other Arachnorb, being semi-mechanical and attacking with a machine gun rather than crushing stomps. For the rest, I split the beady and ranging long legs into one branch, and baldy and hairy into their own branch. This is based on Pikmin 3 Deluxe, which details some differences between Baldi and Beedy, such as Beedy having a waxy exoskeleton. Then I paired Harry with Baldi since they're directly related, and Raging with Beedy as they both seem to share those waxy exoskeletons and other physical attributes. Isn't it cool? Next up are the Lithopods, of which there are two genera. Granignus, consisting of the Fire Snout Beetle, and Granitus, consisting of everyone else. In said Granitus genus, we separate the Arctic Beetle, since it spits snowballs, not boulders, then separate the Armored Beetle and Decorated Beetle. Side note, the Armored Cannon Beetle has never appeared in any Piclopedia, until Pikmin 4, which again isn't being covered in this vid- However, it's safe to say it has the same classification as its larva. Next up are the Scarpinids, one of those families Hey Pikmin did a surprising amount of expansion for. This family has three genera, with our first split separating the Draco genus, as it's the most different looking and acting. The next split separates the Purpuralcus genus, as it can't grab anything and simply attack with spikes. Finally, there's the Scarpanica genus, where we split the Copeller and the two Snitch Bugs. Now for an interesting case the Flutterbee family. 
or more accurately, the Flitterby, Flutterby, and Floaterby families. Yeah, for some reason there are three distinct families consisting of different kinds of spectralids. For simplicity's sake, I decided to lump them all together into a singular family, the Flutterbees. Within this family are the Fenestrati genus, consisting of just the red spectralids, and Fenestari, which is everyone else. Within the Fenestari genus, we split the Electric Spectralid, the only hostile spectralid, then the Unmarked Spectralids, due to their lack of markings. Now let's talk about the Flint Beetle family, consisting of four members. This family has two genera, Lithelitra for the stony flint beetle from Hay Pikmin, and Pilly for the rest. Within the Pilly genus, we separate the doodle bug, as it can harm Pikmin with toxic gas, then separate the flint beetle from Pikmin 1 and 2 from the Pikmin 3 one. According to Pikmin 3 Deluxe, this new design of the beetle is actually a subspecies of the original beetle, hence we are counting them as two separate entities. A few more notes, in the GameCube Pikmin 2, the Doodlebug was listed as the Flint Bug family, which was apparently edited in the Switch port to make it a Flint Beetle member. That said, the Glint Beetle is still a part of its own family in all the releases as far as I know, so it is not here. Alright, now let's rapid fire some short and sweet families. First up, the Snagrits, consisting of... Kinda three members. First, we separate the Piliated Snagret, then we separate the Burrowing Snagret from the Burrowing Snaro. Technically speaking, the Burrowing Snaro has never actually appeared in any Pikmin game at all, but it has been mentioned in Pikmin 1, 2, 3, and even Super Smash Bros. Brawl for some reason. So, yeah, that's enough for me to dedicate its own branch. Who knows? Maybe Pikmin 4 will let us see it. And it'll become the best game ever. 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 Keeping with the birds, here's the Makiwis from Hey Pikmin. The elongated crush blat, despite the name, is still a member of the Makiwis, and gets its own branch for being so radically different from the other two. Then there's the Burrownets, with the OG cloaking Burrownet existing in its own branch, and the Joust Mites getting their own branch, due to their differing positions of their shell armor. The Hunt and Peck family comes next, and is the simplest one yet, simply splitting the Scornets and Scornet Maestro from the Sparrow Head. The Scarab Beetles are quite similar, separating the vastly different Electropede from the normal and wide-mouthed Anode Beetles. Next up are the two Jellyfish-like families. First are the Jelly Floats, splitting the Flying Jelly Float from the lesser and greatest spotted varieties. And finally, there's the Umbloda family, dividing the boss enemy, the Luring Slurker, from the two smaller and more similar Medusal and Clicking Slurkers. And finally, as one final note before we start piecing everything all together, let's bring up the last few families with only two members, as there's basically nothing of interest to mention on their own as individual entities, and I did still want to give them some sort of spotlight as they were slightly higher and more important than the families that only had one member to them. The Blothers, consisting of the Blubbug and the Puffy Blubbug. The Cromads, consisting of the Hermit Cromad and the Bug-Eyed Cromad. The Creep Crabs, consisting of the Segmented Grobster and the Armurk. The Crush Blats, consisting of the Calcified and Crystalline Crush Blats. The Heavels, consisting of the Skitterchucks and the Flatterchucks. The Molluskings, consisting of the Toady Bloister and the Ranging Bloister. And finally, the Skitterlings, consisting of the Skitterleaf and the Desiccated Skitterleaf. Now that we've gone down all the families with multiple members, we can begin to look at their traits and compare them to real-world biology, in order to help guesstimate how they would all fit together into a larger family tree. Here is my complete cladogram showing the complete relationship between all the Pikmin creatures. I know this is rather big and a lot to process, so let's work through it piece by piece. The way real-world taxonomy works is that every animal belongs to several groups. We've already talked about the family, genus, and species clades, but the higher clades not mentioned in the games are order, class, phylum, kingdom, and domain. For simplicity's sake, all the creatures we're talking about likely belong to the Eukaryota domain and the Animalia kingdom. Looking at the phylums, I found five in particular that do a good job in covering all of our bases. Cordata, Arthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata, and Nidaria. 
Again, I'll be brief. Cordata covers most vertebrates, Arthropoda covers bugs and crustaceans, Mollusca is stuff like snails and clams, Echinodermata is stuff like urchins and starfish, and finally, Nidaria are creatures like jellyfish. Obviously, I am greatly over-exaggerating here and skipping a ton of super deep detail, but look, we don't need to go through every single possible definition of an animal here, alright? Just, just, just stick with me for a moment and then head down to the comments and yell about me how, uh, how wrong I am, okay? Okay, just g give me a chance here, give me a chance. Let's start with the grub dogs, again. I made the executive decision to lump them in with the Mammalia class for a handful of reasons. The Empress Bulblax gives live birth, hairy Bulborbs possess hair, and in Pikmin 3, the Bulborbs have a very complex eye structure inspired by the same sorts of eyes that mammals have. Furthermore, I suspect the bread bugs are closely related to Bulborbs. Not only due to their similar body shapes, but also due to the fact that some bread bugs have evolved to mimic juvenile Bulborbs, rather than any other sort of animal, really. As for their order, they likely belong to a fictional order, since they don't clearly resemble any real world mammals. Next up are the Blowhogs, which I also label as mammals in the Artiodactylia order, the order that includes real world pigs. This is due to the fact that they resemble pigs, make pig-like noises, and are even part of the same real-world genus that pigs are a part of. Next up are a few families with only one member, starting with the Areodentia family, the family the Floss Bats are a part of. While they do possess some moth-like characteristics like the nocturnal behavior, fuzz, and wings, they don't appear to have an exoskeleton and overall seem a lot more meaty than even the other insects that appear in Pikmin. I was tempted to put them in the same order that bats are in, but overall I don't think that they resemble them that much. Just below that though is the order Rodentia, where the Numboos family lays. The beard and Amprad appears to be based on real world guinea pigs, particularly having buck teeth and a rat like tail. Underneath them are the Blothers, which I was torn between sticking with the insects or the mammals. They have insect-like heads and wings, but also have blubbery bodies and hair, which are both traditionally mammalian traits. Ultimately, I just decided to stick them here. And finally, at the bottom of the mammalia class, we have the Pinata family, which I haven't even the foggiest idea what in the holy hell this thing is. It has blubbery skin and stores food for the winter, again, both of which being mammalian traits, so yeah, here it is. Also, I tried to organize these things based on evolutionary potential, so to speak. Pinata appears to be the most primitive of the mammals, so it's at the bottom of the tree, and as we go up, the families get more complex and or varied. That's my minimal understanding of biology seeping through, you see. With the mammals done, the next lowest Chordata branch is the Aves and Reptilia classes, which both exist in their own branch. The Makiwis are very obviously birds, so the Makiwis are very obviously birds, and I stuck them in the order Apterigeoformes, which includes real-world kiwi birds. The Snavians, despite being snake-bird hybrids, appear to be more bird than snake, due to their bird-like feet, their feathers, and their bird call sound effects. Finally, Reptilia is the class I gave to the armored Maudad. I've seen a lot of people classify it as an insect, which I can understand given its centipede-like design and mandibles. However, it does not have an exoskeleton, instead just a protective armored shell as Olimar illustrates. Its skin also appeals scaly, and its legs appear to resemble the legs of a gecko, or some other type of lizard. Also, similarly to the behemoth Fosbat, it just appears to be a lot more meaty than most of the insects that we tend to get in the Pikmin series. Further down, we have the class Amphibia, with the order Anura used for the Wallywogs, since they clearly resemble real-world frogs. And at the very bottom is the Puckering Blino, a member of the Actinoptergi class, which includes real-world minnows and other bony fish. Now, according to Wikipedia, the most reliable source as we all know, Echinodermata and Chordata are apparently somewhat closely related, so we're connecting them directly at the hip here and it'll be the next phylum that we discuss. Firstly, there's the class Asteroidea, a real-world class containing starfish. In Pikmin 3 Deluxe, the Waddlepuss is stated to be related to starfish, and the Starnacle's species name is Asterius, 
which is a real-world genus for starfish. Thus, I decided to group both of them here. In the other branch, we have the classes Echinoidea and Holothroidea, for real-world sea urchins and sea cucumbers, respectively. The large splurchin obviously goes with the urchins, whilst the seed bag appears to be based on sea pigs, a species of deep-sea sea cucumber. Now, Wikipedia also says that Mollusca and Arthropoda are part of a branch more distantly related to the other two, so let's start working through this one next. First up are the Mollusks. In Pikmin 3 Deluxe, the Crush Blats are said to be highly evolved Mollusks, so I place them in their own fictitious class, as they don't seem to resemble any real-world Mollusks, of course. Next up is the Bivalva class, which contains the Pearly Clam Clamp. While this is one of a few enemies to have never gotten a Piclopedia entry, pre-Pikmin 4, it clearly resembles real-world clams, so here it is. Then there's a split for the Cephalopod and Gastropod classes. Cephalopod is where we group the Squirtler, as it's clearly inspired by squids and octopuses with its ink and tentacles. Then with the Gastropods, we first branch off the Sand Belching Mirror Slug. Despite having a resemblance to lampreys or maybe some type of mud skipper, Olimar specifically calls it an invertebrate, which, as far as I can fathom, none of those animals are. I ultimately decided to place it in a fictional order related to slugs and snails, since it is called a mere slug after all. Speaking of, we now separate two more real classes. Stylomatophora, which includes terrestrial snails and slugs, and Nudibranchia, which includes sea slugs. Olimar's notes in Pikmin 3 Deluxe state the pyroclasmic sludge is actually a terrestrial snail that evolved a protective coat of fire rather than a shell, so it's in the class that the terrestrial snails go in. Finally, the Mollusk Kings appear to be more water-based, and similar to certain sea slugs, breathe through specialized gills that take the form of a fruit-esque tail. Thus, there they are. And now, for the big boy. Release the big boy! At least I know he won't screw it up! The Arthropods. This is easily the biggest phylum to talk about, given just how many bugs have appeared in this dang series. However, I'll try to keep things smooth and succinct. Within the Arthropod phylum, there are three main classes. Arachnida, for spiders, mites, and other eight-legged bugs. Malacostraca, for crabs, lobsters, and other crustaceans, and Insecta, for... I mean, I, I'll need to illustrate that, do I? First, we separate the arachnids, in accordance with real-world taxonomy. Then, we separate the arachnorbs and dweevils into their own fictional order, since they share similar body design traits and also differ greatly from other arachnids. Next split is between the real-world orders Mesostigmata and Aranae, the order for real-world mites and spiders, respectively. The former is where the metites go, and the latter is for the arachnode and rachnids, as they appear to be more traditional spider-like creatures. Side note, in Pikmin 2, the metites family is listed as unknown, so I just named it the metite family. Occam's razor, simplest answer and all that. The next split is between insect and malacostraca. We'll talk about the crustaceans first. The first split divides the Decapoda order, consisting of real-world crabs, from a made-up order that houses the Creep Crab family. I did this because while the Cropster resembles a lobster, and the Armurk resembles a pill bug, in the real world, both creatures belong to completely different orders, so I opted to create a new order that could house both. With the Decapoda, we first split the Onion Shell family, since it seems to have evolved from more basic crabs, then the Shelter and Cromad families, since both either appear to be, or are outright stated to be, descended from hermit crabs. And now for... the big boy. Release the there are a lot of insects to speak of, but I'll try to get through this as quickly as possible. Our first branch separates the electric cottonade from the rest, since it's... a very confusing creature. It has some traits of insects and non-insects, and no info in Hey Pikmin provides any real leads as to what exactly its biology is like. Ultimately, I just went with my gut and gave it its own insect branch. The next branch separates these Scarpinids and Dirigibugs Bugs into their own unique order, as they also don't quite resemble any real-world insect, but they do seem to kind of resemble each other, oddly enough. 
What with their unconventional methods of propulsion, as well as having two hands to grab and hold things. From there, though, we do get to use a series of real-world orders to help categorize everybody else. First is Odonata, the Order of Dragonflies, which is where the centipairs are found, clearly based off of dragonflies. Side note, the adult centipair is listed in a completely different family as the child centipair, which is not, not that, that's not possible, so I just lumped them together under the centipair family. Then there's Orthoptera, for grasshoppers and crickets. Here we have the Hevel family, as well as the cricket and grasshopper based Jellypur and Kellobug families. Admittedly, I'm just kind of assuming the Heevils are cricket relatives due to Flatter Chunk's jumping power and their uh, somewhat crickety looking designs, but whatevs. Next is Hemiterra, the order of pond skaters. The Skitterlings are said to be descendants of them, and the Spitter Spatter family also seems to be based on them. Following that is Hymenoptera, the order for bees and wasps. The Hunt and Pecks go here, of course, as does the Fuzzbuzz family, which appears to visually resemble wasps. Next comes the Coleoptera order, the one that includes beetles. First, there's the Scarab beetles, who have evolved very advanced defense mechanisms, then the Lithopods, who have slightly less advanced methods of attack, and finally the Flint and Glint beetles, which have no direct attacks. Two more to go! Second to last is Lepidoptera, the order that butterflies belong to. I planted the Dandelfly, Whiskerpillar, and Flutterbee families here, as they all appear to resemble caterpillars and butterflies. And at the very bottom of it all is Diptera, containing the true bugs, like mosquitoes and flies. And it's here that we find the Buronit and Mandiblard families, as the former didn't seem to align with any other order, and the latter has the most rudimentary in terms of biology. And with that, we are... almost done. Just one last phylum to go, and one that appears less evolutionary advanced than the other four, specifically the Cnidarians. Luckily though, this is an extremely simple one. First off, we separate the Hydrozoa class from a totally made-up class. The Hydrozoa is home to the Leech Hydro, which appears similar to the Hydrozoans, and the made-up order goes to the jellyfish-like enemies that make their homes on land, such as the Jelly Floats and the Umblodas. And with that, we are officially done. That's every single animal, or at least all the ones I could make any sort of sense with, in one big ol' family tree. There's still tons of other creeps and weirdos I could have added and will add once Pikmin 4 comes out, with a new Piclopedia filled with changes, additions, and a bunch of new enemies to document, you can bet that I'll eventually make a part 2 to this, adding and improving things as I discover them for myself. And feel free to say your suggested improvements to this thing in the comments below. After all, it's really big, and probably has a ton of wiggle room to speculate, so speculate away! And, of course... Thank you so very much for watching.